Good morning and happy Friday, June 7th, 2019. Welcome to Stock Market Today. I am your host, Dan Russo, Chief Market Strategist at Chaken Analytics. Find me on Twitter at Dan Russo underscore CMT. Stock Market Today brought to you today and every day by Chaken Analytics. And if you head over to chakenanalytics.com forward slash today, you can sign up for a free email delivered to your inbox every trading day before the market open, gives you stock ideas to consider. You'll also be able to follow along with the show as I pull a lot of content from this show from that email. So let's dive right in now. Three in a row for the S&P 500. Those small caps finished lower again. Energy was the big gainer following the recent sell-off. Materials and technology also outperformed. Industrials and REITs were the biggest laggards. Though we will note that all sectors did finish higher on the day. Treasuries were mixed with some curve flattening. The dollar was under pressure on the euro cross, a little changed against the yen. Gold adding on another 70 basis points in WTI crude, closed higher by 1.8%. As we get to the desk this morning, futures are up 30 basis points after finishing higher for a third consecutive session yesterday. Asian markets were mostly higher overnight, though we will note that China, Hong Kong, and Taiwan were closed for holidays. European markets are seeing some gains as well. Treasuries are a little changed. The dollar is stronger on both the yen and the euro. Gold is adding on once again, 40 basis points in WTI crude, following through this morning, up about 1%. And it is jobs day. Investors will be paying close attention to the non-farm payrolls report, where about 175,000 jobs are expected to be added in May. So when we wrap it all up, what do we see here? Knocking on the door, 2850 resistance. Trading a little bit above that here in the pre-market today. I think the resistance area is really between 2850 and 2900. And I realize that is a wide zone, but that's what the market has told us. So that's what we're going to pay attention to. Support is in the 2720 to 2800 zone. And we're closely watching the RSI for a bullish shift. Have not seen it yet. Jake and money flow is neutral. So really, as I've been saying, we have this choppy wide range that we've been in for the past year. So what do you do in that environment? You focus on the relative strength. Find the areas of the market that have been outperforming and where those odds of outperformance are likely to continue. We've highlighted aerospace and defense. We've highlighted energy. We've highlighted software, just to name a few areas of the market that are exhibiting relative strength. That is where you want to go for your long ideas. Look for the very bullish and bullish stocks within those groups that are also outperforming the market. And when those stocks become oversold, they are good candidates for long ideas. What are we talking about in the note today to Chicken Analytics clients? S&P 500 moves higher for a third consecutive day. Fine, we hit that already. Small caps continue to break down on a relative basis. We'll take a look at that a little bit further. Other key themes have improved on the week. You know, whether we're looking at high yield relative to treasuries, whether we're looking at semis relative to the market, um, we've seen some improvement. Though still, the trends are still weak. But weak trends can't become strong trends without the initial stage of improvement. So we are watching. All eyes will be on the non-farm payroll report today. And as I said, futures do point to a higher open today. Let's take a look at the power bars for the major indexes where we've seen improvement across the board, except for small caps. Uh, Dow added 75 basis points yesterday. Now seven bullish or very bullish stocks for five bearish or very bearish stocks. S&P 565 bips on the day, 114 bulls to 69 bears. So really improving since since that uh, weakness through last week and on Monday, NASDAQ, slight outperformer on the day, 19 bullish or very bullish stocks for 12 bearish or bear, very bearish stocks. Small caps down for a second day in a row as the market rallied. That's a theme we're paying attention to. We've been hitting the table hard, saying we favor large over small. That continues to be the case. Small caps down 21 basis points yesterday, 371 bulls, 402 bears. Bonds, Move higher, sending yields lower. Energy was the big outperformer on the day, up nearly 2%, 1.85% on the day. But look at that ratio. One bullish or very bullish stock, 10. Count them 10 bearish or very bearish stocks. According to the Chicken Power Bar, small cap stocks have become somewhat more bearish than large cap stocks. Major indexes have actually turned bullish. Taking a look now at our stock of the day. Remember the other day we said you have to become selective in real estate. Here's a great example why. Core Point Lodge, CPLG, closed at 1236, up 49 basis points yesterday. Does have a very bullish rating due to very attractive financial metrics, very positive expert activity. Stock does have weak technicals, and you can see that here. Stock is really in a downtrend. Now, trying to go into a sideways trend, so it's worth keeping an eye on. But, you know, not really outperforming the 
market or in the rest of real estate started to outperform. This name was an inline performer. So you have to be selective. And now we're actually starting to underperform. Chicken money flow has been intensely bearish since last August. So stock is trying to make the turn, but it's not there yet. You can see it is above the long-term trend line, but the long-term trend line is heading lower. This is what I mean when I say you have to be selective in the group. You can't just say, oh, you know, real estate looks good. I'm going to buy Core Point Lodge. No, you have to take the analysis a step further and look at the individual stock level. And right now, it's just not there. We want to focus on leading areas of the market, of course. But we also want leading stocks within those areas. And Core Point Lodge, CPLG, does not fit the bill at this time. Sector tracker down, We're looking at the movement of the major sectors over the last five days. Materials remains at the top of the list. Remember earlier this week, I said, you need to start paying attention to materials. They look like they're making the turn. Now, we can argue about what's causing it. You can say that, you know, the rallying gold has helped. But, you know, from a trend perspective, we're keeping an eye on what's going on. Materials are beginning to go from an underperformer to an outperformer. Uh, so we need to keep an eye on that. Beyond materials, though, it's still very defensive at the top of the list. Utilities, real estate, and staples round out top four groups of performers over the last five days. Fins, industrials, and tech are middle of the road. Healthcare, energy, discretionary, and comms towards the bottom of the list, with comms being the only group down over the last five days as the FANG stocks remain under pressure due to regulatory scrutiny. Energy, a little bit of a rebound here, certainly can you know, say that it's gotten beaten up and a little overdone to the downside in the near term. Uh, but the relative trend there remains bearish. The ETF power gauge rating for XLE remains bearish. So it's a group we're going to continue to avoid. Uh, discretionary, you can actually see it in my note today. We look at staples relative to discretionary. Staples continue to outperform. Our industry in focus today, yesterday we looked at healthcare equipment, today we're going to look at healthcare services, which is a slightly better view from a power bar perspective, but the group's really been an underperformer over the past six months. Underperformed the S&P 500 by 16.8%, but as I said, a little bit of a different picture here from the power bar ratio, which here for services is neutral. Eight bullish or very bullish stocks for eight bearish or very bearish stocks. Group is currently ranked number 10 of 21 subsectors. Now, when, when we see this, we want to start to look at the relative strength of the group. And then we really have to start to think about the individual names, right? We're, we're kind of neutral from an industry perspective on a power bar ratios. So you got to look at the names. So the names you don't want to own are the very bearish stocks, right? Or the bearish stocks. Biotelemetry, beat, very bearish rating. Patterson, PDCO, very bearish rating. And Diplomat, Pharma. DPLO has a bearish rating, but let's dig in on the group here. Here's XHS, the Spider S&P Healthcare Services ETF. Number one, it has a neutral ETF rating, right? So there are likely better opportunities out there. You want to look for the funds that have bullish or very bullish ratings. Now, I'm willing to give a fund with a neutral rating a pass if it's outperforming the market and the intensity of that outperformance is increasing, but that is not the case here. Healthcare services has been underperforming the market since December. Now we can argue that the intensity of underperformance has been waning of late and money flow is starting to show positive signs, but this is still a downtrend below a declining long-term trend line. So for me, if I'm thinking about ETFs at the industry level and trying to position within the leading industry ETFs to get some outperformance for the ETF portion of my portfolio, this is not a group that looks compelling to me right now. Now, if you want to dig in and look for some individual names, I can't argue with that, but I think you're going to find better opportunities elsewhere. So healthcare services, we'll keep an eye on it. This piques my interest, the waning relative strength, but until we start to see outperformance, it's hard for me to get excited, especially on a neutral ETF. Yesterday's S&P 500 gainers and losers. AMD catches an upgrade, sends the stock higher by 7.8%. IFF reaffirmed their guidance, stock higher by 5.22%. Didn't see any real news on Drillquip FTI to send that stock higher by 4%, although I would say that you know a little bit of the energy rally probably helped there. Sherwin-Williams recently had an investor day, so investors are kind of get lining up their takeaways from that, take the stock higher by nearly 4% on the day. And Oxy 
going higher with the rest of the energy complex yesterday, 3.4%. On the loser side of the board, L Brands just continues to trend lower, a very bearish stock, no reason to get involved there. CTVA caught an initiation. Initiation was a market perform. Uh, stock down 4% on the day. Masserich, again, talking about being selective within the real estate complex. Masserich is bearish. It's been bearish. If you dig under the hood on Masserich a little bit, you can see that there's some exposure to retail there. Down 3.75% as real estate moves higher. Vertex. Vertex had some news about their CRISPR collaboration, also announced a small acquisition, stock down 3%. And Capri CPRI had an investor day recently. Investors come back and take the stock lower by about 3% on the day. So let's get into what we're talking about today. Today is the day we look at key themes and relationships within the marketplace. And one of those key themes and relationships that speaks to kind of risk on, risk off sentiment by the, on the part of investors is how are small caps doing relative to the broader market or how are they doing relative to large cap stocks? Here we take a look at the IWM, the iShares Russell 2000 ETF relative to SPY, the S&P 500 ETF. And we can see a clear downtrend that's been in place since the June, July top below a declining 200 day moving average and recently breaking below support and tagging a 52 week low yesterday for the ratio. At the same time, momentum is confirming the weakness as the RSI has shifted into bearish ranges. We have a series of lower highs. Rally attempts have not been able to break it much above 60. That is bearish momentum confirmation to a weak price trend. At the same time, if we look at IWM on an absolute basis, we can see that the rally from the, begin from the beginning of the year never really came close to threatening 52-week highs. Remember, S&P 500 made a 52-week high back in early May. Small caps never came close, and now they're working lower. We continue to favor large caps over small caps for equity positioning within portfolios. And this chart is one of the main reasons why. Semis are at a relative inflection point. Now, you all know the importance I place on semiconductors. Here we're looking at the SMH, the VanEck Vector Semiconductor ETF, relative to the S&P 500. And we can see that after topping out slightly ahead of the market in late April, went into a downtrend. We found support here at the late 2018 highs and beginning to rally. And we're kind of flirting with the 200-day moving average, which is, let's call it flat. The reason we pay so close attention to this relationship is because of the correlation to the S&P 500. That's what we're looking at at the bottom of the chart here. 20 day correlation of this ratio to this S&P 500 index. And you can see that it's generally positive. So to the extent that semis are underperforming the market, that's a bearish indicator or a potentially bearish indicator for the market. If semis can start to rally on a relative basis, retake this 200-day moving average and begin to move higher, that would carry bullish implications or increase the odds of bullish implications for the S&P 500. This is why we watch this chart so closely. I wanted to lay it out for you here today with the correlation work. Large cap growth rebounds. It's been a big theme of ours. We've liked large cap growth, and you can see why. It's been an outperformer. And even during the month of May, as equity sold off, Large cap growth continued, was an outperformer. IWF is the iShares Russell 1000 growth ETF, has a bullish shake and power gauge ETF rating. Bullish rating outperforming the market. Same analysis as we do for the stocks, right? Bullish rating leading the market. Bullish money flow since the beginning of the year. Investors are accumulating these stocks in this fund. We've now retaken the long-term trend line and triggered a relative strength buy signal today. So we continue to like large cap growth for equity positioning in a stock that we like. Our stock of the day today is Open Text. OTEX has a very bullish shake and power gauge rating. Very bullish stock outperforming the market is now oversold with bullish money flow. Tested and held the rising long-term trend line and triggered a relative strength buy signal yesterday. Remember we talk about relative strength, we talked about software. These are the types of names you're looking for. Look at how well this stock held up when the market sold off in May. These are the types of names you want to come to in a choppy market environment. That's going to wrap it up for today. Head over to chickenanalytics.com forward slash today. I will be back on Monday. Have a great weekend, everyone.